It has been two days and 15 hours since I've last uploaded a video. And guess what? That's how fucking long it took me to work on this video. It's a lot of math involved in these types of videos, but you know what? I always want to know the answer to these questions because you always get all these funky ass fucking rumors floating around the, the community talking about some old staff of home is better than the catch. Primordial Jade's not as good as whatever the fuck. And so we do these videos in hopes to clarify and give you a definitive answer as to what is actually matching up with what. What's better? What's what's not that good? Ain't nothing more annoying then when niggas get on the internet talking about some, yeah, this weapon's better than this weapon because I hit for 450K and that weapon only hit for 375K. Okay, but this weapon has a 50% chance of hitting for 450K, while this weapon has a 90% chance for hitting for 375. So tell me again, why the fuck you think this weapon's better just because it hits harder? What about the average damage? Did you forget about that, big fella? Yeah, you did. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. I'm gonna show you guys the average damage of every single one of those weapons, and we're gonna get into it. All right, so before we get into all the numbers, I wanna first go over the overview, plus explain to you what I don't have included in the slideshows. First and foremost, these are all the weapons we're gonna be calculating and showing you the average damage for each weapon. I also want you to know they're on very fair ground, and I'll be explaining that as we go through the slideshows. They're all gonna be on very fair and even ground in regards to what they have in their substats. Lastly, the team composition, we have Bennett, Kujo, Sarah, and we have Kazuha. So this is a hyper buff rating team comp. It's possible that the numbers could change with national rating, but I don't think that's the case. I'm pretty damn sure whatever the average damage discrepancy is on each weapon will be the same damn concept on national rating. But very small percentage of a chance that I could be wrong on that. Who knows? Anyways, Bennett. We're going to be using the Skyward Blade. You don't have to use that with a national raid and comp since she probably batteries him enough. But I have a Skyward Blade on my Bennett already level 90. So that's what we're using. With that in a, in a crowned Bennett ult, you're going to get 1100 attack from Bennett. Flat attack, straight up 1100 attack. No Bless Oblige is going to give you another 20% attack, which will be calculated separately on uh, the numbers you'll see in the slideshows. Kujo Sarah with Elegy of the End. Is going to give you 733 flat attack if she's crowned on her elemental skill and then she'll give you another 20 percent attack with elegy so with these two in total that's a 40 percent attack buff plus 1833 additional flat attack from these two alone finally we have kazuha we're going to assume he has 1000 elemental mastery which equates to a 40 percent damage bonus during his ult and then he's gonna debuff the Electro Element on the enemy for negative 40%. That's pretty much all you need to know about the team comp in regards to the buffs, okay? So let's start off with Skyward Spine. Down here, this 2,144 attack that you see in regards to the Raiden Shogun's total attack is including the Bennett flat attack buff, Kujo Serra flat attack buff, and then 311 attack from the Feather up here. That's what this 2144 is comprised of. Bennett flat attack, Kujo Sarah flat attack, and then the feather. 80%, 0.80, this right here is gonna be Noblesse Oblige, Elegy of the End, and then uh, the 40% attack from RNG sub stats. That's gonna be the 0.80 right here. And then this right here is gonna be the attack of Raiden at level 90 plus the weapons attack at level 90. The next thing I wanna talk about is 249.1% elemental burst damage bonus. How did I come up with this number? We have the Raiden Shogun's Emblem of Severed Fate passive from a four-piece set. It's gonna take all your energy, 270 energy, and multiply it times 0.25. That's gonna give you 67.5% damage bonus. Then you have Raiden's passive, which gives you electro damage based off of how much energy you have above 100% energy recharge. We have 170 above that, so times 0.4, that's 68% damage. Then we have the Raiden Shogun's skill, which gives you a burst damage bonus based off the energy cost of her burst. Her burst costs 90. So we're gonna take that, multiply it times 0.3, because that's the, the uh, scaling you get at talent level 10 for her skill. That's gonna give you a 27% damage bonus. Kazuha, 40% damage bonus during his burst. Cup Artifact, 46.6% damage. That's going to total to 249.1% for the damage bonus, and that's going to be this number right here. 
And keep in mind, we are not going to do this for every single weapon. If we did, the video would be 45 minutes long. I'm just explaining it to you for one time only. That way you guys can understand this shit the next time you see it on every single weapon. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is we did do the calcs for what you could expect to do if you were to switch the hourglass from energy recharge to an attack percent cup. And then we did the calcs for what you could expect uh, your damage to be if you switch the hourglass to attack and the cup to attack. I just want you guys to see this because when you're doing these hyper buff comps, attack is not necessarily the best method, but we'll see that. You'll see that on paper. Okay, so now let's take a look at how the stats will change when you put in a attack percent cup. This will be the stats right here. You can go ahead and, you know, pause the screen for a bit if you need to. But basically your elemental burst damage changes, your energy recharge changes, and of course your attack goes up a little bit. Now, if you were to switch the electro cup out for an attack cup, this would be the stats right here. Again, pause the screen if you must, but now we're gonna take a look at the damage of the burst with these different stats. So we got burst with energy hourglass. We got the attack times the talent percent, including Raiden Shogun at max stacks, 60. And then they were gonna take in the damage bonus times the crit damage times the defense of the monster times the debuff that Kazuha provides. We're gonna come up with 258.7K on a crit strike with uh, C1 or less Raiden. With C2 Raiden, this will be the multiplier right here, and you'll be doing 369.6K with C2 Raiden. With the attack Hourglass, you're practically doing the same damn damage if you take a look at it. And of course, you'll be doing a little more damage on Raiden's skill passive, but for the most part, you're doing the same damn damage, but losing a lot more energy. And then finally, with the attack hourglass and the attack cup, you're doing noticeably less damage than the other options. So for me personally, these two here, I guess, would depend on how much energy recharge you have. You know, if you have 230 to 250 energy recharge, fine, go to attack hourglass. Her ult's going to be up. If you have anything less than that, though, you're probably going to not have her ult up when you need it to be up which in that case, I would recommend going for the energy hourglass. I personally think the energy hourglass is just a much more comfortable option. If it can do the same damage as an attack hourglass, then why the fuck would I switch over? You get what I mean? But this is not the case. I do want to be clear on this. This is not the case if you're running Raiden Shogun on the national Raiden comp or a comp where she doesn't get a bunch of buffs. If, she, if it's just Raiden Shogun without any buffs whatsoever, the attack hourglass is going to be doing noticeably more damage. Now, for the N1 all the way to N5, I want to be upfront with you. We did not do these calcs for every single weapon. It would have took me a whole nother two days to do those calculations, and I was not about that life. I only did them for the Skyward Spine, just so you can get a good perspective on what damage you can expect to do. These are a good representative, or my bad. This is a good representative, 250.7 and 369.6. This is a good representative of what you can expect to do with the other weapons based off of how hard they're hitting on a crit strike on their initial burst. That's the damage you can expect to do with the other weapons. Hopefully that makes sense. But the N1 and N2 are very, very, very similar in percentage. 79.82, the N2 is like 78.67 or something. So they're so similar that I just felt that you can just take this as the damage that you would do with her N2 as well. But yeah, go ahead and take a look at this. These are the non crit strikes right here. All of these are the non quit strikes. Go ahead and take a look at that if you must. That's the damage you can expect to do. Now we're going to go into a charged attack. You will be doing 42, 47, and 68, and 61 on C2 Raiden. So you can see you're hitting like an absolute bus with the Skyward Spine, which is actually the weakest option out of all the weapons on this list. You're hitting like an absolute bus. So Raiden is, is a monster regardless of any of these weapons that you use on her. But again, I just wanted to do the calcs real quick so you guys could see how strong she's going to be hitting with the other weapons. This is the weakest weapon on the list. Dead ass. Now, in regards to average damage for each weapon, I'm always going to include the average damage for the weapons when we compare it to the next, uh, the next weapon. OK, so Wave Breaker is going to be next. This is going to be Wave Breaker's stats. The only difference is Wave Breaker doesn't give any energy recharge, so our energy goes down, but it gives a massive burst damage bonus that is calculated based off of the total energy cost of your party. So if Raiden has a 90 energy cost, uh, Kazuo has a 60, Bennett has a 60, and Kujo Serra has an 80, you literally add all of them up, and then I have an R5 Wave Breaker, or you have an R5 Wave Breaker, you're just going to take that total and multiply it times 0.24, you're going to come up with 69.6. So this can get stronger with the higher energy cost ult team. But these are going to be the stats for it. 
everything is in place. You can screenshot it if you must, but basically these are the stats for the Wave Breaker. So let's take a look at its damage for its burst. 399, same exact math involved. You're gonna get 295.3K. C2 rating, you're gonna be hitting for 422K. This is a perfect example of what I meant. So right, you're hitting for 422,000 on this, which is very, very strong. That's a lot of damage. But you only have a 61.1% chance of doing that damage. So it brings your average down to 315 with a C2 rating. And then it brings this down to 220.7. That's the average damage you can expect to do with your, um, your initial strike on your burst when you're crit striking or not crit striking. It's going to be averaged out to about 220.7. When we compare that to the Skyrid Spine, you can see it's, it's stronger than the Skyrid Spine. Not like a massive difference. But it's stronger than the Skyward Spine, 315 versus 298, and then 207 versus 220.7. So that's the Wave Breaker. Again, we did not do the N1 all the way down into the charge attack. Too much fucking math for seven different weapons, guys. We already spent 48 hours on the video. The last thing I want to touch up on, though, is if you're really curious as to how much stronger its normals are in comparison to the Skyward Spine, it's the literal same reflection of the difference in damage with these. So 315.24 divided by 298K is about a 5.8% increase in damage. That means the normals will be the same exact difference in average damage, a 5.8% increase. It's literally reflective of what the difference is in the initial skill strike. Okay, so in conclusion, this is dealing 5.8% more damage than the Skyward Spine on average. Moving on to the catch, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this. The only difference is now is we have 45.9% additional energy. We also get a 32% burst damage bonus when you R5 it, but this here also converts into about 30% bonus because 45.9 times Raiden's 0.4% is gonna give you a, a, a certain percentage and then 45.9 times 0.25% from the Emblem of Sever Fate, it actually gets to about 30. So as you are essentially getting a 62% damage bonus between this energy and this burst damage with the catch. So that's what makes this weapon so damn good. And then to top all of that off, you get a 12% crit rate during her burst as well, which is going to give you a, a bigger edge on your DPS because you're crit striking more. But yeah, this is gonna be the stats with a energy recharge hourglass. And we did also do the stats for a attack hourglass. Now I forgot to mention this on the Skyward Spine, but every time we add an attack hourglass to the main substat, we take away 10% attack down here and add 10% to the energy recharge just to make up since you can no longer roll for an attack percent on your sub stats we made up for that by just adding another 10 percent to the energy recharge every time you add an attack hourglass that's what we're doing so when we take a look at the burst damage with the energy hourglass you're doing 265.5k and then with c2 rating 379.3 the attack hourglass pretty much the same damn shit and when you're hitting this hard 2k and 3k damage difference is so damn minuscule it's essentially the same damn shit bro so we're dealing 221 on average with c1 or less rating and 315.8 on average with c2 rating on the initial skill strike let's compare this to the wave breaker fin so wave breaker fin is doing 220.7 and 315.24 while the skyward spine is dealing 207.75 and 298 the catch is dealing 221 and 315 it's literally dealing just a smidge more damage than the wave breaker fin at r5 bro that is wild completely free don't have to spend a penny the catch bleed your eyes out while you're grinding for it is dealing the same damage as an r5 wave breaker fin and it gets better it gets more hilarious watch this shit guys we're moving on to the staff of homa we got staff of homa with 51.8% energy recharge, and then everything else is gonna be essentially the same, except the Staff of Homa is giving us 66.2% crit damage, and it's taking our HP and converting it into attack. 0.8% of our HP, 0.8, my bad. Here's the funny thing. We talk, okay, yeah, let's explain that real quick. So, what we did with the HP is we literally took Raiden Shogun's base HP at level 90, added on 4,780 HP, because that's what you get with a level 20 flower, and then we multiplied her base HP times 0.2. Basically, we assumed we got no HP rolls. We got nothing but these rolls, right? So we got 162 additional attack, which got added in right here. Everything else, though, is pretty much the same. Calculated the exact same. We got 4,007 attack with this. Now, if you're thinking about running an attack hourglass on the Staff of Homa, it's not worth it 
because you already all only have 233.2% energy recharge. If you swap it for an attack hourglass, you're gonna have much less energy recharge and your damage, most importantly, is gonna be the same result as the results I was showing you before. On a hyper buff team comp, you're pretty much doing the same fucking damage whether you have an attack hourglass or energy recharge. So it's not worth sacrificing 40 energy just to have attack it just don't make sense anyways let's look at the damage oh 428.67k on a crit strike this is what i was talking about at the beginning of the video 300k on a crit strike but let's look at that average damage though 61.1 times 2.512 which is the crit strike you're only doing 216.5k and 309.4k on average when we compare that to the catch look who's doing more damage than the staff of homa on average the free to fucking play weapon that don't cost you a penny is doing more damage so when i saw these results i was just like boy that is a goddamn shame man fuck it a. i wonder how many people don't even realize that the catch is just is actually better than the staff of homa on raid and shogun it's just it's hilarious to me man and again this shit gets better we're gonna keep going we're gonna keep it moving just keep all this shit in mind guys i know it's a lot of math but we're trying to get through it you know in a convenient manner man so we got primordial jade spear i was actually thoroughly impressed with this weapon's stats and capabilities with the raiden shogun now of course i already know what the fuck y'all are thinking especially the copium people you yes you do have to auto attack before you ult with raiden in order to get this weapons buff because the way it works is you get 22.4 percent after seven stacks you just have to auto attack seven times and you'll get this buff once you're at max stacks, you get an additional 12% damage bonus. Problem with this is, it only has a 6 second duration on this buff. If you don't attack for 6 seconds, that shit's going to expire, right? However, on this team, it's, it's a very easy fix. All you have to do is attack with Raiden Shogun, switch over to Kazuha, swirl with his skill, switch back over to Raiden, auto attack one time, or two times. Switch back over to Kazuha, ult, switch over to Bennett, ult back to rating just for a single auto to keep that uh ability from uh you know going away and then you go into kujo sarah do her little buff and fucking back to rating and your ult's already up with all the buffs it's very simple and it doesn't snapshot so you keep them buffs the whole time you're attacking with rating shogun so it's a you have to work a little bit hard to keep that buff maxed but it's not that big of a fucking deal you're still gonna get you're still gonna reap the full benefits by just spending an additional what three seconds auto attacking a little bit with Raiden before ulting just keep that in mind, all right? So we're literally going to be doing the same thing we did at the Staff of Homa. We cannot put a attack hourglass on this because we only have 233.2% energy recharge. We're going to keep that here, but your uh, crit rate is going to be 83.1%. So let's look at the average damage for this. We only crit strike for 264, right? Whereas Staff of Homa was 300k. We only crit strike for 377, whereas Staff of Homa was crit striking for 428k. But look at that average though. Look at that fucking average. 235K and then 335.76. Higher than the catch. Higher than the catch, boys. And that's because we have an 83.1% crit chance. Much higher, much more consistent and reliable damage output. So that's why it's stronger than all the weapons before it that we've seen th so far. Primordial Jade is a monster on her. You just have to spend a little extra time auto attacking through the rotations. It's fucking beautiful. So, Calamity Queller is going to be next. Calamity Queller, the one with the highest amount of attack. I'm pretty sure I already have motherfuckers on the internet gassing this weapon up. Oh, Calamity Queller is so good, dude. Special on rating. It's better than all the other weapons. You just be, motherfuckers just be out here just spewing bullshit. <laughs> like, no, no concrete facts behind it or anything. Well, we gonna bring them facts. So, Calamity Queller, 741 attack, gives you an additional 16.5 as its um, sub stat when you take it to level 90. Then, it gives you 19.2% attack when you get those six stacks up after using your elemental skill. This would double when Raiden's off the field, but Raiden's on the field. We're trying to do damage. Well, as soon as you swap her to the field, that double bonus goes away, and you only get 19.2%. Furthermore, you get an additional 12% damage bonus as well. So we factored all of that into the equation, same exact playing ground as the other weapons. And then for this weapon, since its base attack was so high, we did switch it over to attack. Even though we took a big L on the energy recharge, we still switched it over to attack because its fucking attack is so high. I just wanted to know, what would the damage difference be? Well, boys, let's, let's look at it. 
So 281 on a crit strike, 402 on a crit strike with C2 Raiden. The average damage is 210 and the C2 average damage is 300.7. That's weaker than the catch. <laughs> That's weaker than the catch. The catch is goaded, bro. It's the funniest shit ever. Now, down here, if you went for attack hourglass on calamity, it's the same result. So we went for an attack hourglass and we ended up doing 281.9K on a C1 or less rate and crit strike, which is literally the same damn damage, even with the highest base attack threshold weapon in the game. Uh, you know. Whatever copium is running through your mind, I don't know what to tell you, big fella. You can just, just say it. Say whatever you need to be comfortable with it. But the catch ain't out here fucking around, bro. <laughs> the catch is not playing around. The biggest disappointment for me will always be the weapon that okie dokes everybody, right? The fucking, the promotional weapon that's on the banner that everybody seems to think is so much stronger than everything else. Let's take a look at it, bro. We got 55.1% energy recharge, 30% energy recharge, all from this weapon as a passive. This is what this gives to you. 30% energy recharge when you pop your burst. Then it gives you a passive that says, increase your attack based off of 28% of your energy recharge above 100. So you essentially will look at this, subtract 100 from this, you get 218.3, multiply it times 0.28, and that's what you're gonna come up with, okay? So everything else is pretty damn standard though. We did also calculate if you switch this over to an attack hourglass. We're gonna show you both the calcs for both of those scenarios. But this, everything else is pretty much essentially the exact damn same. I did not trust me, this is, I'm not like doing anything to secretly make this weapon a little bit weaker. It all adds up, bro. Here's the attack hourglass. If you switch over, these are what the stats are going to look like on the attack hourglass, okay? We're gonna go ahead and take a look at these results. So we got burst with energy hourglass, 315K with C1 or less rating and 450 thou with C2 rating on a crit strike. What's that average looking like though? What's that average looking like? We only got a 61.1% crit chance since this has no crit st uh, stats in it. 235 and 336.35k is it stronger than the catch it better fucking be stronger than the catch i hope so but is it groundbreakingly stronger than the catch no in fact it's barely stronger than the catch on average and i'm telling you whether you want to listen or not is up to you the aas during the burst although look much stronger that that crit chance plays a significant role in dps so this right here, 336.35 divided by 315.8. Give me one second. So it's dealing a 6.5% increase in average damage over the catch. It's going to be the same increase in average damage over its AAs. So y'all know what I'm about to say, bro. Congratulations, bro. You're doing 6.5% more damage than a free-to-play player because you thought the engulfing lightning was broken when in reality, it just looks cool, bro. It's crazy. I told y'all, shiny Pokemon, bro. You over there farming for the shiny Ghastly. My Ghastly gonna do the same shit. <laughs> so it's wild to me, man. Now look, this is the craziest thing. When we compare this to the primordial Jade Spear, it really blows my mind. So we got 235K and 336.35k. Primordial Jade Spear is doing 235 and 335.76. That is literally the same average, bro. The same exact average. Now I get it, that's also a five-star premium weapon as well, but still, you would think the Engulfing Lightning, well, it is, you know what, let me, let me not get ahead of myself. It is stronger because you don't gotta worry about doing no fucking autos. Like, you just, you just got your damage, cool. But still, still really you can get a primordial jade spear fuck around for absolutely free because it's it's in the standard banner so that's really wild for me bro it's like damn i didn't even know this i did not know any of this shit now again math experts i encourage you to please go back and look at all the numbers and you let me know if what i did wasn't unfair or on unfair ground but trust me when i tell you i tried my absolute best to keep everything fair all the stats are pretty much the same and then whatever we change, we, we made up for it by adding a little more to energy recharge or taking away from attack. Bro, at the end of the day, guys, hold up, reload this. At the end of the day, this is the tier list. We got Engulfing Lightning and Primordial Jade pretty much doing the same damage. We got the Catch and the Wave Breakers Finn 
neck and neck in the A tier. We got Staff Ahoma weaker than both of them, and Staff Ahoma a little bit stronger than the Skyward Spine. And this is this is the Calamity Queller because they don't have it. Uh, they don't have the Calamity Queller down here. But that is actually the results. And guess what? They're all pretty much doing incredibly similar damage, bro. In conclusion, stop fucking buying these weapon banners, bro. I am going to try my hardest to always compare these weapons that they make look so strong with their fancy number. Look, and Golf and Lightning hitting for a 450k while what primordial was only hitting for 377 convince you like oh it's so much stronger but on paper it's the same shit if you're a math person we know this shit if you're not a math person you don't know this shit you're about to get conned into spending money and practically donate into my hoyo so <laughs> there you have it boys y'all let me know comment down below let me know your thoughts but stop buying these goddamn weapon banners man it's a scam bro the catch free to play out there bro balling out of control very minuscule damage differences from it in comparison to the engulfing lightning absolutely hilarious so y'all take care man i'll catch you on the flip side